Hello, this is Justin with Green Residential. In this video, we're gonna talk about replacing a fill valve on a toilet that is faulty. It's not shutting off when it should. Let's get started. So if you listen carefully, you can hear water running. The problem here is that the fill valve doesn't turn off, so the water is essentially just continuing to run. You can see the water spilling into the overflow pipe here. This will go into the toilet bowl so there won't be any indication of water leaking on the ground or around the toilet. This can run you up a substantial water bill if you don't catch it. Now this is a Kohler flush valve. You may be more familiar with a traditional looking one, one that looks like this. However, despite the differences, they function very similar to each other. So the first step in replacing this fill valve is to turn the water off to the toilet. You can do that at the shutoff valve that should be located near the toilet. Once the water's off, you're gonna to wanna to get rid of the water in the tank. The best way to do this is to just simply flush the toilet and let all that water drain out into the toilet bowl. Now there is going to be a small amount of water at the bottom, you can try scooping this out or you can get a bucket and place it underneath the toilet tank where the supply line attaches to the toilet. So next you're gonna to wanna to unscrew that supply line. Make sure your bucket is placed correctly to catch any water. It should just be simply hand tightened so you should be able to unscrew it by hand. Now if you need a pair of pliers to get it started, that's fine. So once you have unscrewed that supply line, the next thing that needs to be removed is the lock nut. Now on this one, you might need a pair of pliers. I'm gonna use these channel lock pliers to loosen that lock nut. So once I've successfully loosened that lock nut, I will then unthread the rest by hand. Now at this point, there is a chance that water can begin spilling out as you unthread it. Again, you'll wanna make sure you have that bucket underneath and it's catching the water correctly. My advice is to try to keep that fill valve in place, stable, not be moving it around as you unscrew it. If it becomes loose or removed, any remaining water in that tank will begin to leak out. Okay, so I have pulled the fill valve and the water that was in the bottom of the tank has leaked out into the bucket. Here is that fill valve and you can see the hole at the bottom of the tank. The refill tube is connected to the flush valve. Now in this particular case, it was easier for me to disconnect the flush valve in order to disconnect the refill tube. It may be different for you, but as you can see, the faulty fill valve has now been removed. To reinstall this flush valve, all I need to do is insert the end of the flush valve into this hole right here and twist it. That will lock it in place. Okay, so now that we removed the old fill valve, we're ready to install the new one. Now your kit most likely came with instructions. I highly recommend checking those instructions. It's important to get the height right of the new fill valve. The upper portion of the fill valve where the actual valve is needs to be completely out of the water. The height of the new fill valve could be different from what the old fill valve was. So you wanna make sure you're, you're adjusting that height correctly. The top of this fill valve should be three inches above the top of the overflow pipe. These fill valves, they're adjustable. You can adjust the bottom part by pulling it in or out. You just wanna make sure that the little plastic locking ring is moved up before you adjust it. Once it's the right size, you can slide that locking ring back down. Next, you want to install the shank washer. This is very important. Without this washer, you will have leaks. So just make sure that the wide part is facing up. So you want to push that all the way up and make sure it's snug up against that base. Next, you want to attach the refill tube to the fill valve. There is a little nipple on the fill valve. You just simply push the refill tube onto that nipple, put the clamp on, insert the new fill valve into the hole at the bottom of the tank, and then attach the refill tube to the flush valve by pushing the refill tube onto the nipple and installing the clamp. There are many different ways that the refill tube gets connected onto the flush valve. 
This is a hose clamp that clips onto the side of the overflow pipe. You may have something like this, or it could be different. The main thing is that the refill tube connects to the flush valve. So this is a roller clamp. You may or may not have one of these. And the reason for something like this is it's a water saving device. So it's possible that too much water is going into the toilet bowl. What would happen in this situation is that extra water could be getting siphoned down the trapway. So it's just wasted water. So what this little device can do and we're not going to get into how this works in this video, but what this device could do is control the amount of water going into the toilet bowl, essentially making the toilet tank and the toilet bowl reach their full levels at the same time. So now that we got the fill valve set in place, now we need to tighten it down. So we need to reinstall the lock nut. This just needs to be hand tightened. Now this is very important. When I removed the old fill valve, the washer for the supply line, this cone washer, became stuck to that old fill valve. So I am having to reinstall it. It's very important to make sure that the supply line has this washer. If it does not, it will leak. The kit that you may have purchased may come with a new cone washer. If so, you should install it. The supply line just needs to be hand tight. Over tightening this or the lock nut with pliers could damage it. So at this point, we're ready to turn the water back on, so we can turn it on at the shutoff valve. Water should be entering the tank. You will want to check for leaks. Look underneath the toilet tank, at the lock nut connection, at the supply line connection. Make sure you see no water. If you do, you're going to want to address that. It may need to be tightened up further. You may have missed installing a washer or installed it incorrectly. The new fill valve should allow water into the tank. Once the float rises to a certain point, the fill valve should turn off. This little screw is a mechanism that controls the height of the float, which can allow you to control the water level. If you turn it clockwise, it raises the water level. And if you turn it counterclockwise, it lowers the water level. You should flush the toilet so there's no water in the tank and then adjust it. Your goal is to try to have the water level below the top of the overflow pipe. So you're going to want to test your work. You're going to want to flush the toilet multiple times, watch the water level rise in the tank, make sure it goes to the correct level. You want to make sure that the fill valve is working properly. You also want to check the toilet bowl, make sure that you're not seeing water going into the toilet bowl when the fill valve has turned off. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, it'd be much appreciated if you hit that thumbs up button. You know, we put out videos like this on a regular basis. They include simple repairs many homeowners can do. We also include general house knowledge. So if you're not a subscriber, I recommend hitting that subscribe button. I'm so glad you caught this video. Have a great day and bye for now.